Welcome to BigCountryPreps.com. I'm Evan Wren, and this is our Countdown to Two-A-Days series, our daily look at an area football team and the key questions we're going to be answering about that team in our August 17th preseason football preview here at Big Country Preps. I'm with my partner, Dan Youngblood, and tonight, Dan, we got one of the perennial powers of the Big Country, good every single year, a threat for a regional title every single year, the Cisco Lobos, and this year it shouldn't be any different. No, I mean, this This looks like a, a vintage Cisco team coming off an 11-3 and three season. They bring back 17 of their 26 lettermen, including six offensive and nine defensive starters. Uh, on paper, this looks like another really good uh, Cisco Lobos team. They've got uh, quarterback Hunter Long back. He's in his third year as a starter. Uh, just a really good uh, running quarterback that uh, that is capable passer as well, particularly in what they with what they asked him to do in that offense, and then some really nice pieces around him again. Uh, and, and the one thing that really excites me about this team is when you look at that defensive number, but with nine defensive starters back, this could be you know a really really good Cisco defense. So this should be a fun one to watch. They've got size up front this year. They're not they're not smallish. Uh, they've got Trent Houston back at the ring back position, uh, a, a quality uh, running back who had 1,500 yards and 18 touchdowns a year ago. Uh, this is going to be your typical uh, Cisco football team. They're going to get that push up front. They're going to have that running game going, and they're going to be very good defensively. So this is going to be one that uh, you know, another Cisco team to keep an eye on, a threat to win the regional title. And I think if there is one question on that offense, uh, it, it probably will be experience on the offensive line. I think you mentioned they've got size. It's not going to be an issue of not having big bodies. It's just going to be some guys I think that are going to have to learn as the season goes along with some guys. They're, they're yes. stepping into new situations. But at Cisco, you kind of expect those guys them to roll those new guys in and continue to do what they do offensively out of that eye formation. So uh, I, 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 if I'm a Cisco fan, I'm not worried at all about their offensive line. But I do think that is one of the questions just in terms of youth that they have. But uh, – like you said, I mean, you look at this season, what they've got back, uh, the expectations there, the season they're coming off of. I think there's no reason to think that the Cisco team won't be challenging with Holly there at the top uh, of that district again this year. One thing that makes Cisco so good every year is coming up and making these pre-snap reads and adjusting their blocking and uh, just prior to the snap and, and getting people blocked, uh, adjusting their play just prior to the snap. But when you've got a bunch of young kids up in the offensive line, uh, it, it sometimes it'll take a little while for them to, you know, be clicking on all cylinders. So, yes, that could be that could be an issue. But once they do get that cleaned up, the defense is going to be there. I do like their chances. Yeah. And the one thing about Cisco, you also know, I mean, they're going to load up that non-district schedule. So those young kids are going to be challenged. And by the time district rolls around, there's not going to be a whole lot they haven't seen. And when you look at their schedule, their non-district schedule looks like a pretty typical, you know, Cisco schedule. They're, they're hosting Clyde to start the season, go to wall and which kind of become an annual non-district rivalry game, go to Breckenridge, which should be a really solid Breck team. And then they finish off their non-district at home against a good Jacksboro team. So that, that should be a really good non-district schedule to get them ready for district. Well, in this district uh, also is going to be fun. Uh, Aside from the fact that they're in with Holly, uh, which will be a season finale. Talk about a season finale at Holly on November 4th. They open district play on September 23rd against Colorado City. They follow that with a road trip at Winters on the 30th. They host only on the 7th. And then they go for a tough road date at Stanford. Uh, and that's that's always a difficult stop when Stanford's got a really good ball club. And this year, I expect them to take a big step forward up there. That's going to be an interesting game. Then they host Anson, uh, a rebuilding Anson team on the 28th, followed by Holly uh, in what should be, I mean, that's going to be one of the games of the year in the big country. When you've got Holly and Cisco going at it, now they're going to be in the same district. That's going to be a road trip to Holly. What a game that already shakes out is, I mean, that's going to be with everybody in the, in the big country is going to be keeping an eye on that and talking about it. Yeah. You mentioned it. I think that Holly game is the one that, that everyone's going to be talking about though. They'll be circling that one on the calendar, but I think you mentioned a, a really big kind of important game that could sneak up on them is that October 14th game at Stanford. That's going to be, like you said, a, yes. an improved Stanford team. And that will be a very important game. If Cisco wants to enter that, that, that regular season finale against at Holly uh, in a potential, you know, district championship game, that's one they're going to have to win. So uh, that'll be an interesting one as well, but I like the schedule uh, and, and I like what, what Cisco's put together. I think this will be another uh, a really fun Cisco season against a really challenging schedule. Stanford's got most of its people back. They've got speed and they're going to have home court. So that, that will be an interesting matchup. That's a grass field as well that yeah. they're accustomed to playing on. Uh, Cisco's a turf team. And uh, Cisco in the past when they've gone to Stanford have, I mean, they've run into some tough opposition there. That's going to be an interesting game. Go yeah, on. I think you mentioned it. They're, they're two toughest games of the year, both on the roads. So that will be a challenge for them. But with what Coach Dennett's built there, 
uh, or continued building there on top of what, what they already had uh, with, with Coach West, I, I think that they they will be up to that challenge, and it's going to be a really fun season. It's uh, We will definitely be keeping an eye on that, that matchup at Holly. That, that would not be surprising. That is a, a big under preps game of the week when that time when that time rolls around. Absolutely. And with that, it's about time to uh, shut down tonight's edition of the Countdown to Two A Day series, the Cisco Lobos. But before we do that, we want to remind you that we've got three separate subscription packages here at Big Country Preps. We've got a monthly for five bucks a month. We've got a semi annual six month subscription for four bucks a month. And we've got an annual 12 month subscription where we knock that price down to three bucks a month, 36 bucks for a full year of Big Country High School athletic coverage. We'd also like to remind you before we sign off on this episode of our countdown series to be on the lookout for our August 17th preseason football preview. There'll be a ton of content on area football. You will not want to miss that. In the meantime, thank you for joining us for this episode of our countdown to two days series and make sure you join us again tomorrow when we will be talking about the Colorado City Wolves here at BigCountryPreps.com.